Welcome to the Mercedes Wilson Show. Sexual abuse is something that is a part of my story. I was abused as a young woman and it has for sure shaped the woman that I am today. Not only do I guard my heart and life, but I do the same for my children. My guest today has something to say about this topic as well. Her story hit me in the gut when I heard it. So let's talk. You're amazing. Welcome to the Mercedes Wilson Show. My guest today flew in from Cincinnati to be a part of the Mercedes <laughs> Wilson Show. I feel so special. Thank you, you Ashley, <laughs> for coming. <laughs> but we have a serious topic at hand. Before that, tell us who Ashley Nicole is. So I am, I just recently accepted a new position with Darkness to Light, which is a nonprofit organization for uh, empowering adults to prevent child sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. I am their director of partnerships, so I'm learning how to navigate through that. I'm a mom yes. of a teenager. Of a teenager. Girl. Lord, let me pray for you. Of a teenager. Let me pray. Yes. Let's pray. <laughs> yes. I need it. Yes, of a teenage girl who is going on 27. Oh, and wow. she She's is. She's so animated, she though. Is, she is. She's learning who she is evolving, learning what she likes, learning who she is. So uh -huh. that is a full-time job as well. <laughs> um, so I am an author. I've written two books. Yes. One's Be Brave and the other is Defiant Girl. I pretty much use what I've experienced in life to display it for others to help them find healing and purpose. Yes, so good. So let's talk a little bit about the healing and the purpose part because you've been through a lot. Yes. Give us some of your uh, background as far as family. So um, my background with my family has been a bit rocky. Um, I was adopted at about the age of eight, but that was after going through foster care. And I was in foster care because of some sexual abuse experiences with my biological family and some physical abuse, emotional abuse. And my parents just were not fit to care for me. So I was placed in foster care, mm -hmm. went through the system, um, went in group homes, went from family to family, and really never built a foundation in how to built relationships with people. Yeah. And so when I was adopted, I had a very hard time uh, fitting into a family that didn't sound like me, didn't look like me, didn't yeah. believe what I believed growing up for right. a good portion of time. So my upbringing was a bit rocky um, starting out. Yeah. If you could look back through a lens when you were between the ages of eight and just say 15 or 16, what would that little girl look like? Like describe the type of things that you felt that you saw um, and that you had to experience? So I was a little girl that just wanted acceptance. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted love. I wanted somebody to love me. I wanted somebody to care for me, somebody to be there for me. I wanted parents, you know, I wanted siblings that I could engage with and, you know, be best friends with and just do things that normal kids do. But I didn't get the opportunity to really experience that. Mm -hmm. um, I dealt with a lot of sexual abuse in my, from eight to 12 years old, um, I'm sorry, that's not true. It was 12 to 18 years old, I okay. apologize. Mm -hmm. So um, I've dealt with a lot of sexual abuse with my adoptive family. I uh, was adopted into a family that was a pastor and first lady, and so they believed in very Christian principles. And mm -hmm. I was brought up in a family where we were just free, we didn't do anything, we kind of just, we were gypsies, yeah. we moved around a lot. There was no stability. And so to transition from that, from a biological family to this very structured, very strict, stern Christian home, it was yeah. very, very challenging. So what was that like for you? Like, when did you come to know Christ for yourself? Because you said you moved and you got brought into that. But yeah. when did Ashley discover Christ? So at 14, I made the decision on my own to actually accept Christ mm -hmm. as my savior. Now, I had been in church and I'd been active in church. I'd been in the youth, on the youth team and the youth praise team. I was leading worship. I was on the prayer team. You know, as a PK, you do everything. Right. You usher, you, sure you do. do everything that there, every role <laughs> there is, you, you play it. Right. So I, I got to see the faith and practice, you yeah. know, in those roles, but it was around the age of 14 when I was like, okay, Lord, like I really want 
a serious relationship with you. I don't want to just come to church. I just don't want to be a part of a family, you know, that yeah. believes in you and I don't believe in you. Right. Um, but it was very challenging for me because there were things that I was experiencing in my home that didn't align with what my father, my pastor right. was teaching me. Right. And so it was a little challenging to accept Christ right. knowing all that I was experiencing. Right. And we're going to get to that in the next segment. But before we go, I want to know, what are some of your favorite scriptures? Because you've been through a lot. So yeah. as we go through things, there are certain scriptures that God gives us to bring us through. What yeah. are some of your favorite scriptures? So my absolute favorite scripture is trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Mm -hmm. That is the scripture that has guided my life. Um, I've had to trust in the Lord so many times when I could not see what was ahead when I when or when what I saw didn't match with what the Lord had, to, had told me um, or what I knew was my future. And so for me, that is the scripture. That is the one scripture that has just been yeah. the rock for me. Yeah. Um, I, I you can't lean on your own understanding. You know, sometimes things, they don't match up with what you see. They don't match up with what you feel and they don't match up with what you think. And so right. it's like you have to trust in what God is saying right. versus what you're feeling at that time. And we're going to get into all of those things yes. that, that you had to go through. So you stay with me and you stay with me as well. We will be back with Ashley Nicole. Won't ever let the cold world get the best of me. Keep my head. Ever since I made my first beat, I knew music was a passion. Along with the beat makers in my company, I get to share my passion. Music is a way to dream, and now I get a chance to make dreams come true. Welcome to Soundmaster Beats. Restore your body, beauty, and soul with Caprisology.com. Providing wellness and ministry services for your church and family with master herbalist, iridologist, and conference speaker Caprice Butts. Are you as healthy as you want to be? Nutritional help is just a click away with online wellness packages and consultations. Or grab your friends and book a wellness workshop for your church group. Plus, get daily inspiration to revive you from the inside out. Restore your body, beauty, and soul with Caprisology.com. Subscribe today for a free wellness guide. True Color Strategy, your CMO for hire, bringing strategic business, brand, and marketing solutions to find your nugget of truth. To learn more, visit www.truecolorstrategy.com. Welcome back to the Mercedes Wilson Show. I am sitting with my guest, Ashley Nicole. And Ashley, we're going to get right into it because um, sexual abuse is real, and it's real for so many of us, men and women alike. But tell us your experience when it comes to sexual abuse. Uh, my first experience with sexual abuse was when I was a child. I was raped at the age of three by a family member. And um, I did not have parents who really stood up for me. And so um, they couldn't stand up for me because of addictions that they experienced mm -hmm. at that time. And so I went through foster care, went through adoption, all of that. And then I was adopted into that Christian home and my father sat me down when I was 12 years old and he just said, you know what? I love you. I'm not going to hurt you in the way that you have been hurt before. And I just want to love you. I just want to be a father to you. And so I began to trust my father at the age of 12 in about six months after we had that conversation, he started to molest me from 12 to 19 years old. Hmm. And so this was someone who was teaching me everything that I knew about God. Right. but also using that to manipulate me to be able to do whatever he wanted to do. Right. So that was um, an experience. It was a different type of experiences. It wasn't just um, a lot of times we think that sexual abuse is rape or we think that it is, it is physical touch. Um, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it is manipulation. Um, sometimes it is exhibitionism. Sometimes it is just Now weird explain things. that because you have some folks that have in their mind that it's exactly what you said, rape yeah. or physical touch. Yeah. Explain the other two 
two things. So it is those um, physical touch and rape, but it it is also um, when someone exposes themselves to you mm -hmm. like an adult. That was one of my experiences. My father often exposed himself. He masturbated in front of me often. Um, and then he exposed me to pornography at an early age, at about 13 years old, mm -hmm. and would force me to watch porn from 13 years old to about 17 years old, um, almost on a daily basis. And so to have someone who teaches you about Christ and then also use that against you or use that to manipulate you to molest you or sexually abuse you, yeah. um, it, for a very long time, it, my faith was confusing to me. How do you get up and do service? How, like you, I'm talking about you knowing what's going on behind closed doors. It was very difficult. How? Like, I'm trying to wrap my mind around it. Like, I'd be... But wait a minute. Yeah. You know what I mean? How did you internalize that? And how did you act out if you did it all? Yeah. So at that time, um, sexual abuse, there wasn't a label for it, especially in like African-American homes. We don't really talk about sexual abuse. I didn't know the title of you it. Don't I didn't know how to out of my house. listen. You, you what just goes just on in our house stays, stays in yep, our house. Yep, yep, yep. And I couldn't label what was happening to me because nobody had ever talked about mm. it. Nobody ever said, Ashley, this is wrong. You know, what you're experiencing is wrong. No one should ever touch you in this way. No one should ever do these things. And so because no one ever told me they were wrong, I just trusted my caregiver. I trusted my father when he said, I love you. I care for you. I'm never going to hurt you. No one else knew. No, no one, one else in the house. No knew. one. No one said that they knew. But I believe that my mother knew what was going on. Um, I believe that she just didn't know what, how to handle it, mm -hmm. how, you know, mm -hmm. to say anything about it. Mm -hmm. She chose to deal with it the way that she chose to deal with it. So it was very challenging, yeah. um, but there was a lot of denial for, on my part. I was like, this can't be happening. Yeah. He said he loves me. You know, this is a, a pastor. This is someone who does so many great things for the right. people in their community. Right. Like, this isn't happening. You know, what he's doing can't be what I think it is. And How so, old were you when you came out? Uh, well, when you the first somebody. time that I that I boldly declared that I was sexually abused was when I was 21. But wow. I began my language was different when I was a teenager and I would talk to my friends and I would ask them, hey, does your father expose himself? Like, does your father show his private so parts you knew to you? Something, yeah. Yeah. And I started asking questions, but and I was disclosing as a teenager, but the language was different. My teenage gotcha. friends didn't understand, gotcha. like, they gotcha. they would just say, oh, that's weird. Like, you know, no, my dad doesn't do that. And what I learned later on in life was that a lot of my friends went back to their parents and told their parents what I had said to them at that time. And I had a lot of those parents reach out to me in my wow. adult years to apologize for not doing anything. You know? And so it was, it was, a, I disclosed, but the language was different. Yeah. What happened when you came out and told the world about this? Um, so I told the world at 29 years old. Um, mm -hmm. I told my mother and my brothers when I was 21. Um, but at 29, I decided that I really wanted to reach a level of wholeness that I, I couldn't unless I disclosed. And so when I made the decision to share my story, I did a, a video on social media and said that I had experienced sexual abuse and that I just wanted people to understand that there is life on the other side, that it doesn't have to control you. Um, it doesn't have to define who you are, but right. it can push you into a purpose. And when I did that, a week later, my father was found dead in his home to a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the chest. And it's documented as an accident. Um, that's not my belief that it was an accident, but is documented as one. And so the reaction of his death added more of a burden to me right. as well. Right. How did that add a burden and what did you experience? So I was already receiving a lot of backlash for disclosing, number one, because he was a very prominent, influential right. pastor. And not only was he a pastor, but he was a huge community leader. He had uh, he served on many boards of I'm not going to say what boards right, he served right, on, right. but he served on many boards. And so a lot of people knew who he was. And so the fact that I said something against the character that people said that, you know, that he displayed there was a lot of backlash. People hated me. I got so much hate mail, um, so many letters and so many DMs and in, uh, Instagram messages and social media and all of that telling me that I shouldn't have said anything. And that when he passed away, then I got more of that. Well, this is your fault. Right. You shouldn't have said anything. If you hadn't said anything, then he wouldn't be dead. Well, if it's an accident, how is it? Right. How is it my fault? How did you get through all of that? 
a lot of therapy, mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. a lot of mm -hmm. counseling. Um, I had to talk to someone to really dump out everything that I was feeling yeah. and definitely a lot of prayer and yeah. um, really trusting in the Lord and really believing that there was something good that could come out of this. There yeah. had to be, yeah. there yeah. had to be because yeah. I just could not wrap my head around the thought that God would allow me to just be on this earth to suffer right. for so long. There had to be something positive that was going to come out of this. And so I had to continue to fight until I could really see the light like at the end yeah. of the tunnel. And we're going to talk about that light on the other side of this because my goodness, you are <laughs> helping so many people now. And we have to have you back too. Yes. But you stay with us. Okay. And we're going to talk about that on the other side of this. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Stephanie Krebs from Young Living Essential Oils. Do you realize being healthy is more than just diet and exercise? It's what you apply to your body. What products are in your home and your environment? Don't be overwhelmed. I'm here to help you one step at a time. With a company that is based on integrity and passion, Young Living Essential Oils. Call me at 585-708-4020 or my website, myyl.com backslash body sense. Power965radio.com, the new sound of Buffalo, is a proud supporter of the Mercedes Wilson Show. They have a full line of unique programs. Find out more about the station's owner, Sheila Brown, in her new book, 29 Years of Preparation, at Power965radio.com. Tune to LCTV 1301 on Spectrum Cable for local talk shows, sports, entertainment, and special events in our communities. We also bring you the best gavel-to-gavel -gavel local government meetings and an opportunity for you to talk with your local officials live on TV. Program LCTV in your favorites button on your remote. Watch live or DVR LCTV channels 1301, 1302, and 1303. For the best in local programming, it's LCTV. For more information, go to www.lctv.net. Won't ever let the cold world get the best of me Keep my head up high like the sunrise Even though it's hard, I try each and every day Every time I fall, I get back on my feet I know that I can make it If I, I keep on trying Hello Buffalo, my name is Yvette Phillips. I started a group five years ago called We Are Buffalo Strong. One day my kids and I were driving in downtown Buffalo and we noticed so many people sleeping under the bridge. I wanted to do something but my resources were low. So I reached out to a few family members and friends and we began taking food downtown once a month to feed our homeless community, some of which were veterans. After becoming 2017's Humanitarian of the Year, more volunteers started helping our group. Since 2013, we've fed 6,460 people. My goal is to make sure no one goes hungry or cold in the city of Buffalo, which is called the city of good neighbors. I challenge you to make a difference in your community. Be the change you want to see. Together, we are all Buffalo Strong. Welcome back to the Mercedes Wilson Show. All right, Ashley. You went through all of that. God brought you through all of that. Let's talk about the light that you spoke of. Tell us what you're doing now. So I am using my story as a display for other people to let them know that there is a life, a good life, an abundant life on the other side of abuse. It does take work. It does take commitment to uh, the healing process. Um, one of the greatest miscalculations of my life was believing that admittance that there's an issue was the hardest step. Uh, the hardest step is committing to the process. And Ugh. so I've had to learn that I have to stay committed to the process of healing. Um, it's not an overnight experience. Yeah. It is something that you really have to be committed to. And so I have committed my life to healing and helping and others helping heal. helping others. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the thing about you I love is you have books out, you have two books, you speak, you travel, and you help other women yes. that may be going through this. Yes. Tell us about your books. So I have a book called Be Brave. That was my first book. That's my baby, my original book. Uh -huh. And that just pretty much spills out the details of my experience growing up from adoption, foster care, mm -hmm. um, the sexual abuse experiences and overcoming that. And then I wrote a book called Defiant Girl. And Defiant Girl is about you really pursuing your purpose, um, no matter what other people say about you. And if you're that weird person that has that weird gift or weird, weird ability and you don't quite fit in a 
cookie cutter category. Um, it's a book that really speaks to you being who God has called you to be, oh, walking so in your bad. purpose and your individuality. And you so. speak too. You travel and you speak. What type of conferences yes. do you speak at? So I have done a few conferences. I've done a few women empowerment conferences, some leadership conferences. Um, one of my favorite ones is Ignite Conference. And last year we had it in Boston. This is for the darkness to light. It is a, um, a conference that gathers a lot of advocates, a lot of attorneys, a lot of people in the medical field to come and learn what they can do to prevent child sexual mm -hmm. abuse, to know, you know, what the signs are, how we continue to um, break the statute of limitation laws, yeah. you know, so it's, it's a lot more than just um, telling a story, you know, to someone to encourage them, you know, I am looking and pursuing how can we stop this from happening yeah. altogether? Yeah. How can we take all those resources and all that money that we spend on aftercare and put it in prevention care and just stop it from happening altogether and get those who are doing the the dirty work and those yeah. that are the perpetrators get them the help that they actually need. Yeah. I am praying and I hope and I can I can just about uh, guarantee that some of the guests that are watching are praying for your extreme success because you are in your vein, girl. I appreciate it. Don't stop. <laughs> I'm so God. serious. I'm so serious. Take 30 seconds and speak to the camera. Speak to someone that may be going through what you've gone through, but don't see a way out. Yeah. So there is a way out and there is an opportunity for you to relentlessly pursue your purpose. You have to admit, number one, that there is an issue, that there is something going on, and then you have to reach out for help. You're not going to be able to do it by yourself, whether that is through faith based, whether that is through a Christian counselor or just psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever it is that you need. Pursue the healing that you need wholeheartedly and you have the ability to receive everything that God has always intended for you to have. You are not disqualified from anything just because someone took advantage of you, just because someone made a decision to sin against you or hurt you. You are qualified to receive every good thing that God has promised you. That is so, so keep good. pursuing it. That is so good. Two things, yes. darkness to light, give yes. us a quick blurb on what that is about and then give your contact info so folks can support you. Gotcha, so darkness to light is an international nonprofit. It's one of the largest ones in the world to empower adults to prevent child sexual abuse. And it is an organization where we have trained about 2.2 million adults in child sexual abuse prevention and we have a goal to train 4 million by the end of next year. Wow. And so um, you can reach darkness to light at d2l.org and to reach me, everything for me is Speak Ashley Nicole on social media. My website is speakashleynicole.com. And I need my hoodie. I got you. you got I got you. You got my hoodie? I, okay. I got you. All right. <laughs> I want to thank you. Thank you, Ashley, for joining me today. And we will be right back with the Mercedes Moment. Won't ever let the cold world Ever since I made my first beat, I knew music was a passion. Along with the beat makers in my company, I get to share my passion. Music is a way to dream, and now I get a chance to make dreams come true. Welcome to Soundmaster Beats. Restore your body, beauty, and soul with Capriceology.com. Providing wellness and ministry services for your church and family with master herbalist, iridologist, and conference speaker Caprice Butts. Are you as healthy as you want to be? Nutritional help is just a click away with online wellness packages and consultations. Or grab your friends and book a wellness workshop for your church group. Plus, get daily inspiration to revive you from the inside out. Restore your body, beauty, and soul with Capriceology.com. Subscribe today for a free wellness guide. Hello Buffalo, my name is Yvette Phillips. I started a group five years ago called We Are Buffalo Strong. One day my kids and I were driving in downtown Buffalo and we noticed so many people sleeping under the bridge. I wanted to do something but my resources were low. So I reached out to a few family members and friends and we began taking food downtown once a month to feed our homeless community, some of which were veterans. After becoming 2017's Humanitarian of the Year, more volunteers started helping our group. 
Since 2013, we've fed 6,460 people. My goal is to make sure no one goes hungry or cold in the city of Buffalo, which is called the city of good neighbors. I challenge you to make a difference in your community. Be the change you want to see. Together, we are all Buffalo Strong. Tune to LCTV 1301 on Spectrum Cable for local talk shows, sports, entertainment, and special events in our communities. We also bring you the best gavel to gavel local government meetings and an opportunity for you to talk with your local officials live on TV. Program LCTV in your favorites button on your remote. Watch live or DVR LCTV channels 1301, 1302, and 1303. For the best in local programming, it's LCTV. For more information, go to www.lctv.net. Wardrobe for the Mercedes Wilson Show was provided by Clothes Mentor in Tonawana, New York. Grade A looks for less. Welcome back to the Mercedes Wilson Show. I hope today's show enlightened you to the fact that healing does not happen overnight. It comes in phases, and God wants to take his time on making us whole. This is a very simple scripture that we've all heard, but in case... It rings so true. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Even when our trust in others has been broken, God never fails us. When I lean on my own understanding, I act according to a broken person's emotions. For me, it is a dangerous place to be. It is a process for so many of us, but I can honestly tell you that one thing that helps me get through my whole life together is getting direction from God. He knows and sees all and deals with the root of issues. If you have been affected by sexual abuse, I encourage you to pour out all that you have been holding to God. Ask him for direction on who to speak to because there is never a wrong time to get wise counsel. There is safety in a multitude of counsel. Ask him to work on your heart and to show you how to get through these rough times. God delights in being a refuge for us and that I know. Thank you for allowing me in your homes today, and I pray God's blessing over you and all that you hold dear in your hearts. Learn more about this show. Fill out forms to be a guest and give us your show ideas at MercedesEWilson.com. Also, follow me on all social media handles at Mercedes E. Wilson. And don't forget to check out all of the shows via YouTube and my podcast. Share this show with someone you love, and thank you for tuning in to the Mercedes Wilson Show.